Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna show you how to do this trig equation question. Um, and mainly addressing this part of the question. Okay, so when you look at sine x equals to root three on two, um, hopefully you already know the answer to this question. It's actually one of our exact values, our exact ratios. So this is probably on your formula sheet as well. Um, but basically x would be 60 degrees. So sine 60 would give us root three on two. Um, so this is just a basic question that we've done up until this point. Um, but now we have to address this. They started to add this to the question, where it says for zero, when x is between 0 and 360. Like they said, a domain for it, for it. And basically to understand what's going on, it's really important to have a look at um, the graph, like what's happening visually. Okay, so once you understand it, um, visually once the rest you can you don't have to draw it every single time okay this is just for understanding purposes but I've just got here a sign a sine curve between 0 and 360 okay so uh, between 0 and 360 and basically whoops and basically I just wanted to explain or show what we're actually doing when we're when we have an equation like this when sine x is equal to root 3 on 2 like what are we actually solving well, we're actually solving um, sine x, which is this graph. And we're saying, okay, when is it equal to root 3 on 2, right? Now, root 3 on 2 is, since this is 1, root 3 on 2, if you put it into your calculator, it should be a value less than 1. So I'm going to say, let's say like here. Let's zoom in. And say root 3 on 2. And we're basically asking, when it does it equal... To root 3 on 2 right and the answer is here and here right at these two positions our sine curve is equal to root 3 on 2 and what we found well, what we mean when we say 60 degrees over here we mean okay that is whoops sorry I'll make it a bit neater that is 60 degrees and yeah that is definitely an answer that will give us root 3 on 2, right? But there's actually another answer. So th there's this guy as well. Now, what would that be? If you, had to, if you had to look at this diagram and try to figure out what this angle or this one would be. Now, one thing to notice about a sine curve, like this part here, this is uh, symmetrical, okay? so. If this gap is 60, then that means this gap must also be 60, right? And yeah, uh, from uh, our knowledge of the sine curve, that point is 180 degrees, right? So this one here should be 180 minus 60 degrees. Does that make sense? So that will give us the answer of 120, but how we got there was just 180 Right, so this is 180 and then we're subtracting just 60. Okay, so the actual answer to this question is not just 60, but 120 as well. Okay, now this graph here, there's a nice table that summarizes this process. Okay, since we need to answer questions for not just sine, but co uh, cosine and tan as well. There's a nice um, table that summarizes all of this. And maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, but if you haven't, it's this one here. Okay, where well we say all stations to central. That's just a acronym for me to understand, uh, for me to remember. But basically, we have these four quadrants where we have 0, 90, 180, 270 and then come back to 360 okay so I'll just uh, talk about the sign uh, how this relates to our sine curve okay and then it will kind of relate to the other curves as well so if you look at if you look at this guy um, our 60 degrees was our answer that we found here okay in our uh, first quadrant between 0 and 90 right, between zero and 90, which is here, like like this bit, between zero and 90. 
Um, in there, we just have the answer 60, right? In the region of 90 to 180, we have the answer. I'm going to write 180 minus the 60 degrees. Okay. Um, that's obviously 120, but I want to write it in this way because if we have any other question that wasn't root 3 on 2, and let's just say we get some answer to, to solve that question. Okay, and we're going to call it the principal angle. Okay, and I'm just going to say um, theta. Okay, in our case, theta was 60, but just to make a general uh, a general way to answer all questions, let's call it theta, and that means whatever the theta was, this should be 180 minus theta. Cool? So this is uh, how we get this, um, uh, how we get this table. Now I'm actually just going to fill out the rest of this table and then I'll explain um, how to use it. Okay, but just as we found theta and 180 minus theta, for the, um, for the other curves, if we have like, if we were to find maybe the same value, but negative root 3 on 2, then that means, let's use a purple color, here and here, we should be able to calculate these angles as well. Because remember, since we have this, if you have a principal angle, you can calculate um, all these other values. Because this is 60 degrees, right? So, so that means this is just 360 minus the 60 degrees. And this one is 180 plus 60 degrees, right? So let's get rid of this. So you can kind of see where these where these where these guys come from. It's theta, 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta, and 360 minus theta. Right? Now the last important thing to note is the sign. Okay, so we have positive root 3, right? And if you're solving for positives uh, in the sine curve, this all uh, this all stands for like all, this stands for sine, tan, and cos. And it's basically saying in the first quadrant, um, all of our trig functions are positive. Okay? And in the second quadrant, only um, only sine is positive. So you can see like between 0 and 180, between 0 and 180, sine is positive. And between 180 to uh, between 180 to 360, 180 to 360, sine is a negative value, right? So that's why you don't see um, signs. Okay, so these letters tell you in that quadrant uh, which functions are positive. Okay, so if you actually take a look at all the other graphs, right? I'll just quickly draw like a cos graph. Um, this is the first quadrant, right? This is the second quadrant. And then let's just draw like this third quadrant, and then this is the fourth quadrant. You can see it kind of matches up. In the first quadrant, yep, cos is a positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive, so everything else is negative. Yep, our cos is negative. In the third quadrant, it says only tan is positive, so which means everything else is negative. Yep, that's true. And in the last one, only cos is positive. Okay, so this, uh, this table here is something that we use to summarize um, this whole process. Okay, so sometimes we, like a lot of students, will know how to use it, but actually don't understand it. Um, but if, you learn, if you're learning it for the first time, I think it's re obviously really important to understand where it came from. Okay, and it's good to try to fiddle around with it. If you have any questions on this, um, just let me know. If I didn't uh, do a good job of clarifying, I can make, a, make up a, like a follow-up video um, just explaining a bit further. Okay. Now, all this to say, we can now solve these questions without drawing a big ass graph, okay? Um, so I already just solved this first one, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to do these questions. Now they're gonna be a lot more like quicker to do once you understand this table, okay? So, okay, let's solve this one cos x is equal to negative a half. Now, the first thing to do is 
to not worry about the sign first, but mainly first think about what is the theta going to be. Okay, so cos x is equal to a half. What will that uh, main angle be? So from our exact values, hopefully you remember like um, x equals to uh, 60 degrees again. Cos 60 will give you half. And I'm just going to say, put a bracket and say, this is the principal angle. Principal angle. Okay, it's not actually um, our answer. Uh, what we want is we found, we found our principal angle. This is where we look at the sign now and say, okay, well, we have half, but we actually have negative half. So where is cos negative? Cos is negative in this quadrant and this quadrant. Oh, whoops, uh, my bad. This quadrant and this quadrant. Right, so in those two quadrants, uh, cos is negative. Okay, so that means we're going to follow these rules. So that means the answer is uh, 180 minus 60 and 180 plus 60. Yeah, I should change this to theta maybe just to make it more clear. Okay, so now x is equal to 120 degrees and uh, 240 degrees. Okay, uh, one thing that is great about maths is you have a calculator. So once you do this process and you're not sure or you want to check if your answer is correct, you can just put it back into the calculator and say cos 120, you will get negative a half. Okay, uh, last one, I'll show you how to do a tan question and... We'll leave it at that. So tan x is equal to negative one on root three. Again, first just think about the angle that will the principal angle that will give us this value first. Um, and I believe tan thirty. Yeah, tan thirty is one of our exact values. So uh, thirty degrees is our principal angle. Okay, and then let's look at the sign. We have a negative, right? Right, we've got a negative here. So where is tan negative? Tan is negative in this quadrant and this quadrant. Okay, in the first and third, they're positive, and in the second and fourth, they're negative. Okay, so we're going to say 180 minus theta and 360 minus theta. So x equals to 180 minus theta, 360 minus theta. And that should be our answer. Cool. So you can see how powerful and useful this table is. Okay. And again, it's just a way to summarize um, this whole process when we solve it using the graph. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was helpful. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.